Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to dealing with materials data. In this course, we are trying to understand the collection, analysis and interpretation of uh, data from material science and engineering. Uh, we are in the third module which is on probability distributions and uh, we are going to begin with uh, uh, some discrete probability distributions. Specifically, we are going to talk about Bernoulli trials and binomial distributions. Um, let us consider an ideal solution of A and B or a random solid solution uh, of A and B. If you pick a random atom, uh, is it B if you ask the question, then the answer is either yes or no. In other words, there are only two outcomes. And if you are looking for B atoms and if you find a B atom, then you can say that uh, the outcome is a success. And if you do not find a B atom, you can say that the outcome is a failure. Uh, so, but success and failure are within quote marks because uh, suppose if your interest uh, is not in B atoms but in A atoms, then finding B atoms will be considered as a failure and finding A atoms will be considered as a success. Because there are only two outcomes, uh, success uh, is uh, complement to failure and failure is complement to success. And what is the probability that the answer is yes? So like I said, it is a random solid solution and you pick a random atom, what is the probability that it will be um, a B atom? That is basically given by the composition of the alloy. Uh, suppose if it is a 50 atomic percent alloy, then the probability of finding the atom to be B uh, will be 50 percent because we have assumed the random solid solution or we have assumed that it is like an ideal mixture. Uh, so any random atom that you pick, the probability that it will be of type B will be given by the uh, alloy composition itself. So XB will be the uh, probability. And this probability is the same for any of the trials. Okay. In other words, implicitly we are assuming either that it is a large number of atoms from which we are picking some and so this process is not going to change the composition or we are assuming that we are just probing and finding that it is either B or not and then we are going to leave that atom there. So it is not going to change our uh, probabilities. Uh, so any number of times you do this uh, experiment. Uh, so these are the um, um, are the assumptions that have gone in, and uh, we are also going to assume that the outcome from different trials are independent. That if you have made one measurement, it's not like the second measurement is going to be affected by your first measurement. So under these conditions, so that there are only two outcomes. And the probability of the success is some p and it remains the same for all um, trials and uh, different trials are independent. Such a process is known as a Bernoulli trial. You can write the probability uh, mass function for the Bernoulli trial um, because we have assumed independent then the probability should multiply because xb is the probability of finding b atom. And uh, if it is uh, success, then it is XB itself. So if it is failure, then 1 minus XB is the success. So if you say that the success and failure are determined by 1 and 0, then XB power K 1 minus XB to the power 1 minus K, where K is actually either 0 or 1, describes uh, the uh, result of every Bernoulli trial. Uh, if it is uh, XB, uh, it is a B atom, then the probability is XB and K is 1. So 1 minus XB uh, will uh, have 1 minus K uh, in the exponent. So because uh, K is 1, that is 0, so that will give you 1, so you will get XB. If it is not a B atom, then uh, uh, because k is 0, xb to the power 0 will become 1. So 1 minus xb uh, to the power 1 minus 0, so it will become 1 minus xb. So that is the probability of finding a non-b atom in an alloy of uh, composition xb. 
So, this is a Bernoulli trial. Based on Bernoulli trial, um, you, you can now ask the question, suppose the alloy was not random, it is an ordered alloy say. Uh, let us say that there are specific sites which are occupied by A atom and there are specific sites which are occupied by B atom. Now will the trials be Bernoulli? They will not be. Because if you do different trials, if you pick a random atom, depending on where the atom was picked from, depending on the site, the probability of finding a B atom will be different for different sites. So, this cannot be considered as a Bernoulli trial. If it is a uh, random solution or if it is an ideal solution, you can consider this as a Bernoulli trial. If you now conduct such Bernoulli trials, suppose you conduct n independent Bernoulli trials of which k are successful. What does that mean? You say try to look at some 100 atoms and you find that about 55 atoms are B, right. So, the, the result of such an exercise of uh, conducting n independent Bernoulli trials of which k are successful is known as a binomial distribution. And the probability mass function of binomial distribution uh, it depends on k how many successful trials you got and how many total trials you conducted which is n. So, it is n factorial by k factorial minus n minus k factorial x b to the power k and 1 minus x b to the power n minus k. You can understand this because we are assuming everything to be independent and one Bernoulli trial had uh, probability and because there are many different ways of getting the other results when you do n times this exercise and k of them are successful. So, the n factorial by k factorial uh, minus uh, in, into n minus k factorial basically gives you that uh, different combinations and so this is the probability. So, they are all multiplicative so you just multiply and you get the result. The mean value of uh, the binomial distribution is n times uh, x b whatever is the probability that you are assuming. And variance of the binomial distribution is n times x b times 1 minus x b. Okay. Uh, you can notice that the variance is proportional to n because of which if you take relative uncertainty that will go as 1 by square root of n because sigma will go as root n and you are dividing by n because that is the number of trials. So, you will get 1 by root n. And this is a very nice uh, uh, information to have because this shows you that if you do larger and larger number of experiments, your uncertainty uh, goes down, your, uh, your relative uncertainty goes down because your variance is proportional to n. So, this basically gives you the assurance that uh, you can improve your accuracy by doing large number of experiments. This is not surprising because uh, if you take 10 atoms and find that some 3 of them are B. Uh, you and if you conclude that uh, the uh, composition is uh, 0.3 because uh, you had uh, the probability as uh, x b and you did 10 and the mean value that you got is uh, 3. So, 3 divided by 10 will be 0.3 uh, that will be the mean that you will decide. But if you do probably 100 maybe you will get 35. So, you can get better accuracy maybe you do 1000 and then you get uh, some uh, 367 or something. So, you can improve the accuracy uh, by doing larger number of uh, experiments. So, that is what uh, this gives uh, this um, information on variance gives. Suppose uh, if you choose a random alloy and let us say that consists of not two types of atoms, but m different types of atoms. Right. Uh, such alloys are known and uh, they are uh, uh, the equimolar multi component alloys. They are also sometimes known as um, uh, high entropy alloys. Uh, in such cases uh, what happens? Again uh, you can describe using a similar uh, uh, distribution function which is known as a multinomial distribution function. Binomial is for 2 and multinomial is for more than 2. So, if you have m different types of atoms and uh, sometimes these type of uh, materials are made for example, 20 percent of 5 different components you make an alloy. So, in that case uh, you will get the multinomial distribution. Now, binomial distributions are common whenever we have n independent events and each one has 2 outcomes and the success is with probability p and failure is with probability 1 minus p and these events are uh, independent and the probability is also the same uh, for every trial. 
whenever this happens you will see that the result will be a binomial distribution. Uh, in microstructure analysis and in the case of geometric probabilities for example, uh, these uh, will again be binomial um, uh, because they are like Bernoulli uh, trials. Suppose you pick random points from a microstructure, uh, let us say that that consists of uh, two phases. Uh, like the steel that we considered earlier which had phase 1 or phase 2. So, if you pick random points and if those points happen to be uh, either from phase 1 or phase 2, uh, then you can think of uh, the, um, uh, the process as I pick a point, is it phase 1 or phase 2? So, the answer is yes it is phase 1 or no it is not phase 1 in which case it is phase 2. And what would be the relative probability of this that would depend on the area fraction. Uh, because if uh, phase 2 has larger area fraction and the random picking will most of the times uh, end up with uh, phase 2 and if phase 1 has uh, more area fraction you will. So, uh, some amount of quantitative information about the microstructure you can get by doing exercise of this sort. This also happens suppose if you have n components, uh, identical components and if you pick and see if it uh, passes a quality test for example or if it is in working condition for example, the answer again is yes or no and depending on the component that you are choosing and uh, its uh, process or property, uh, it might or might not pass with a probability p and uh, if you keep doing n such uh, experiments and uh, each one is independent and the probability does not change as you are doing your experiment uh, for success, then that will also be a binomial distribution. So, in many, many different cases uh, one comes across uh, binomial distributions and uh, these two are just uh, uh, two cases, uh, the, the random alloy uh, picking and uh, geometric probability in microstructural analysis are just uh, two examples. Um, you might uh, think that the random alloy example is a bit far fetched, uh, but we will look uh, uh, at a case and understand that it is uh, not so, uh, it is very relevant and we are going to look at uh, uh, one such uh, uh, microscopy technique where this has relevance. Uh, in any case, so how do we deal with uh, binomial distributions using R? Um, this is a set of uh, common um, theme that you will see that runs through the rest of this uh, module. Uh, there are always uh, 4 commands, uh, then in this case it is uh, binomial distribution. So, binom is uh, common and you have d binom which is for probability density, p binom which is for the cumulative distribution function, q binom which is the quantile function which is the inverse of the cumulative distribution function or binom which is for random variate generation. We have seen some of these commands earlier. R norm for example, we used to get random variates from a normal distribution or L norm we used to get random variates from a log normal distribution. So, so we have seen some of these commands earlier and so we are going to do this. So, it is for binomial, so you have D norm, P binom, um, Q binom and R binom. Uh, and similarly for other distributions you will have this uh, DPQR uh, along with the distribution. So, that is how these commands work. So, let us uh, now go uh, to R and work with uh, some of these uh, commands. What do the uh, probability distribution function and cumulative distribution function, uh, the, the quantile function uh, look like for binomial distribution? and how do we generate random variates from the binomial distribution. So, that is what we will do now. Uh, let us uh, go to R. Okay. So, here is the first set of commands to use uh, uh, D minum. Okay. So, x is a sequence. So, let us say that it goes from 1 to 1000 uh, in steps of 1 and we want to plot x um, and we are going to get the uh, binomial uh, um, distribution density. right? Um, and uh, so, so, there are 1000 uh, uh, is the n um, 
and uh, 0.5 is uh, basically the probability p. So, so this is how the distribution function looks. Of course, you can change the probability and you can look at how it uh, changes. So, you can uh, so it keeps shifting uh, from where the uh, peak is going to be. So, this is the d by norm and so we can do the next one which is the p by norm. Again it is the same sequence and so x is from 1 to 1000 in steps of 1 and now we want to plot x with the cumulative distribution function p by norm for uh, when the probability of success is 0 0.5 right. So, this is how it looks and of course, if you shift then the um, probability distribution uh, the cumulative distribution function shifts and so this is also uh, expected. Now we want to get the quantiles, uh, but remember for quantiles the value should run from uh, 0 to 1 because it is the inverse for this what is the x is what we are trying to get. So, the x uh, sequence that we should get should go only from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 in point 0 0.01. Um, so, let us call that as y, it should go from 0 to 1 in terms of 0 0.01 and we want to get y and this is q by norm y and let us say for 0.5. So, this is the uh, probability um, the, the, the quantile function uh, which is the inverse of the distribution function and of course, you can get it for 2, you can get it for 4, you can get it for 0 0.6, you can get it for 0 0.8 and so on. So, this is basically the inverse of the function that you saw earlier. Finally, if you want to generate uh, random variates, uh, of course, you can use that using R by norm and uh, let us uh, do that. So, I am going to make 3 plots and I am going to pick random variates um, 10, 100 or 1000 or 10,000 uh, with uh, 0 0.5 as the probability value um, and plot the histograms, right. So, that is what you see. Uh, this is the case when I picked 100. And this is the case where I picked 1000, this is the case where I picked uh, 10,000, okay. So, this is uh, with 0 0.5, then what happens if I do with uh, 0 0.2, okay. So, this is what you get for 0 0.2, what happens for 0 0.8? So, you can sort of see that for example, 0 0.8 uh, for small values uh, skews like this and then for 1000 it is like this and when it comes to 10,000 that is not making much of a difference. So, probably if you do um, maybe this as some 50 or something we can clearly see the difference, let us see. Yeah, so, so you can see the um, the, the, the distribution how it changes with uh, more and more of random variates that you are generating or more and more number of times you are repeating this uh, exercise. Okay, so, we will come back to this, um, there is uh, an interesting theorem which we are going to look at uh, later. Um, but this is uh, just to show you how to deal with uh, these distributions uh, and work with them using R. So, we have just looked at uh, binomial uh, and Bernoulli trials we are going to go through each one of these uh, distributions. So, it is a whole uh, zoo of distributions that we have of which we have chosen only few. Uh, there are a very large number of distributions that are available and uh, so we are going to deal with a few of them uh, as we go along uh, which are of importance and relevance along with the information as to where they are useful or where they should be used and why uh, if possible. So, that is what we are going to look at for the rest of this uh, uh, module on uh, dealing with probability distributions using R. Thank you.